All right, everyone, welcome back to another Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. Great guest today, Leon's with us of Hellbound Glory. Big fan, he's been on the show before. So if you'd like, you know, backtrack and check out that episode if you want. Uh, today, he's going to fill us in on what's going on currently. Since last time we talked to him, he's got a new record out that he did in a studio with Shooter. Um, then he cut some of those tracks, uh, made them live. And uh, yeah, he's been playing music, going on tour. Worked on a new app. Uh, Shooter's got an app coming out he's going to tell us about. Um, he's doing some stuff overseas. He's going to fill us in on that in the UK. Um, so, yeah, thrilled to have him. Um, so before we get to that, I do want to say thanks to everyone that's been following, liking, sharing. The channel's growing. If you're on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. And, uh, of course, follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I'm not a tweeter, so I don't have I don't have that. So, but you can get all the other information there. Uh, and we have a website now. Um, that's www.coyoteradioshowpodcast.com. It's pretty slick. Um, just kind of has all the shows that have been out. You can listen to there. Um, throwing a show in July. There's a link on that there. And I'm selling merch, selling coyote hides, coyote skulls. Uh, just a little bit of everything. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think that pretty much covers covers it. Uh, let's go talk to Leon. All right, welcome back, Neon Leon's with us from Hellbound Glory. <laughs> Thanks for coming back on, man. It's been a minute. It has been a while. I think last time I spoke with you was uh, I was still laid up. Laid up. Yeah, you were laid up. Probably about two years, almost, maybe a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. So a lot's, um, for anyone listening now, uh, if you want to take a step back and learn about um, Hellbound Glory and what Leon's done over the years, we've talked, we covered a lot of stuff a while back. Uh, Old records, uh, live performances at Muddy Roots. I think we bitched about Sam Hunt a little bit. Was that the guy? Yeah, still hate him. Yeah, we still hate that guy. There's been a couple other people that get dogged out on this show. Um, really? Yeah. Who else does everybody hate? It was another pop country guy. I couldn't tell you his name. It was at the time. It was like a viral song over the summer. I couldn't okay. tell you. Couldn't even tell you his name. That's how bad it was. You know, they come and they go. Yeah. They, they go back through the <laughs> thing. So since then, though, um, we got a new live. Let's see, it was probably about Thanksgiving time, I think, when this new record came out for you. It's a live cut. Got some, uh, man, it's, it's, it's stripped down. I like it. It's uh, very honest and raw, dude. It's very raw. Mm-hmm. Some people might have a difficult time listening to it without a box of tissues with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, you know, I did the one with the shooter, and then we also did the live versions of the songs. So you got, if you want to hear the studio versions, you got Nobody Knows You. And if you want to hear the stripped down versions with just Chuck and I, there's the Nobody Live. And uh, They both dropped. Go give them a listen. Uh, Seem to be going pretty good. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, maybe a kind of downer songs or whatnot, but... <laughs> Well, I, it's hard. Um, I don't know. It seems like 90% of the music I listen to is sad songs. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe not 90%, but more often than not, I'm listening to some sort of downer. Maybe because it's something I can relate to on some you know, personal level or whatever shit that's going on in your life. Really? You know? Just like uh, just sad songs like George Jones, sort of sad stuff like that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I think most of the people I listen to, they're probably already passed away. Um, but yeah, anyway, tell me, tell me about the both the records here. Let's start with the the studio version with Shooter. I know you guys have been friends a while and worked together on other projects. Uh, well, you know, I just made up all those tunes during the just after just throughout the COVID thing, and then we got together and. And, uh, you know, Shooter picked out the tunes to do and he, you know, kind of came up with the theme and 
went in and just nailed it out in a couple of days. Uh, you know, I, I think it turned out pretty killer. I'm fucking pretty proud of both of them. Uh, you know, recording is tough, especially learning songs on the fly. I mean, we went in there and those guys were just pros. They, I would play the song for them once or twice and they'd come up with an arrangement right there and then we'd nail it down in the studio. That's crazy. <laughs> Got pretty good songs. I can't wait to never see you again. It seems to be the track that is, uh, is getting the most plays, which is pretty cool considering it's the last tune I wrote for the album. I finished that song and I sent it over to Shooter and I said, you know, what's, when are we going to do this? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a killer and tune. I love it. Catchy. Most popular one, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I just, we got a recording studio and we're trying to do some viral video sort of things. There's just some stuff to promote the album. And uh, we we got the videos and they're all up on YouTube with songs like 13 Corners and Evacuation Song. And the tracks just sounded so good. I figured, why not take... You know the the actual the audio and make an album out of it so people could listen to that on on iTunes and uh, Spotify and Amazon and all those. But uh, you know you want to listen to both versions. I would listen to the album because the album brings a whole different thing, and then the the acoustic tracks. You know they're just kind of more uh, you know kind of just that stripped down sort of sound. That, you know it doesn't have any of that studio magic and all the cool solos and all the other stuff that the band is bringing so i guess it's a matter of taste yeah yeah um man i don't know it's uh that's hard to do like you said going in the studio and capturing that especially with guys that are learning on the fly it's like you pin down a moment in time and sometimes it works and some guy sometimes it doesn't uh i think it worked this time for you for sure yeah well, they're pros, you know, that's just, uh, that's what they, they do for, uh, you know, they're in, in the studio five days a week doing stuff, you know, and I know Shooter has them working pretty consistently too. In fact, is, Shooter is working with, uh, with Yellow Wolf quite a bit too, right? Yeah, I know you're a big fan of Yellow Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, he has been. Um... He did that album, uh, what was it? The, uh. Sometimes why you heard that? Yep. Sometimes why I haven't seen it um, live yet. I was hoping they would tour it, but uh, haven't seen it in person. Um, he's kind of going back to the rap thing a little bit more. He's working on some other projects, but I did see Shooter working in the studio with um, Hank Four, Four and the Strange Band. He they just finished up a record these past, you know, past over the weekend or something. So kind of excited to see what they did there. You know, I'll maybe to collaborate with those guys one of these days. That'd be a lot of fun. How about Glory and the Strange Band and Hank number four or calls himself four, right? Yeah, well, his name's Coleman, but he goes Coleman four by four. four. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's pretty easy going, dude. He's crashed here before on the couch. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Long yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. This well, stuff doesn't freak him out too bad. I guess Hank Jr. He's telling me universe. all the stories of uh, Hank Jr. having all the stuff on the walls and <laughs> everywhere he's been and showing me pictures. Pretty cool. Yeah, I guess he'd be right at home. Uh, well, that's cool. He's out there sleeping on the couches and sleeping on the floors. That's uh, that's a good way to do it. That's uh... <laughs> yeah. So are um, you putting a tour behind um, this record now that, you know, winter's kind of dissipating and starting to, spring's starting to show its face a little bit? You're going to be hitting the uh, road soon? Or? Uh, we're going to go back over to the UK sometime soon in the summer. We're going to go do some more dates over there. And then just summer dates as they come in. No big plans for big tours. Uh, I got this app that i'm working with working with i don't know shooters shooter created the app it's kind of like a crowdfunding for music app remember kickstarter where you mm -hmm. would people would crowdfund a project of some sort well 
It's like a crowdfunding individual concerts. I don't know. I think it's pretty big. It's um, I I saw that you posted something a while back about it. And then um, knowing that I was going to talk to you, I went ahead and downloaded it. I already got the app. You did? You did? <laughs> wow! Thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you just log in, pick where you're from, then you can. It looks like you can do what? Like you can have a venue you can specify, or yeah. an artist, or I mean, what's the ins and outs of it all? You just pick something you want to back once it's put out there. Like if I was to promote a show on there, it can be backed. I think it could come from either the band or the promoter or the club or even the fan. You know, like a a fan could say, I want to hear Hellbound Glory and uh, wherever. Uh, outer space or whatever. You get enough people who in outer <laughs> space are going to pay for uh, Hellbound Glory tickets. You know, I get to say, hey, I'm not going to go there unless you guys give me this much money or unless there's right. this many tickets sold. And so, uh, you know, the fan could say, fan, you know, they could start a campaign and they get all their friends or they get all the people in that area to get enough tickets or enough people to get me to, to uh, commit to the show. And then they take that, you know, the fact that they have all those people have bought tickets and then you got the band committed to the show and you uh, take that to the venue and then the venue, you know, could say yes or no. And, you know, are they going to say no to a show that guarantees so many people right yeah that's it's something interesting more, it's not my it's not my deal i just am a kind of the, the test case for it yeah and that's i awesome. we're gonna start using it as much as we can so that's kind of my plans for touring in the future okay yeah i'm gonna have to get on there and so, so it's all fully functioning running now right I mean, other than just downloading the app, I can go ahead and put a show on there. Like, if I want to bring you to Indianapolis, I'm going to start one. Please do. Let's do it. Let's go and do it. Yeah, let's see what happens. Anyone listening, find it. I'm going to probably this week and get it set up somehow. And let's let's bring Leon out out to Indy. <laughs> you know what? I can't wait. Well, let's. we got something to start with. So yeah. here's the the. He brought to you by uh name of the podcast that just a full name. Just the, the Coyote the Co Radio Show and Podcast. I know it's a mouthful. Coyote, it's called I the mean, Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> Coyote brings Hellbound Glory to the fucking Indiana. How yeah. cool that. Right there on the flyer. <laughs> just like that. It's been a long time. I think last time we played Indiana. Oh shit. Probably saw it five years. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely doing then. Yeah. Oh, it's been uh, a good, good time. Got some good friends out there. Awesome. Where what where was it? Do you remember? Where you played in Indy? Uh, you know, uh uh it was two thousand fifteen or sixteen. It was with it was with Blackberry Smoke and it wasn't Hellbound Glory. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's a long time for Indianapolis. Other than that, I don't know. I might have played Fort Wayne or something. Yeah. I'll buy and see. Something just popped in my head. I was at a show at Duke's Indy on uh, New Year's Eve show. Jeremy Pinnell, Hannah Juanita, Eric okay. Olander. But there were some people there, and um, they recognized me, and they, they knew I did it the other podcast with you um you know two years ago and so they stopped and started talking he's like we know leon i was like what oh yeah he's like dude we need to get him out here <laughs> uh, and they told me this whole story and they were showing me videos of you it was in uh near cincinnati at some racetrack and you're on top of a car jamming or something oh, okay you're talking about carl huh you're talking about carl i couldn't tell you i couldn't remember <laughs> Yeah, you're talking about Buddy Carl out there in uh, Cincinnati. Yeah, he's cool, okay. dude. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you know, I went out there. They put me up. I went and sang on top of uh, whatever the heck that was, some off-road vehicle, sitting on top of it, and then I think passed out on the floor of uh, 
some travel trailer or something, you know, the whole band. <laughs> guys sleeping outside, one guy sleeping in the car, it's on the floor. <laughs> Whatever works. That's yeah. Great. Low to the ground. <laughs> So you're also doing some other side projects, right? You, I've, you just sent me a video uh, with some guys you're collaborating Ooh. overseas. Yeah, those are the dudes from England. The producer is producing our new stuff. Is also producing that band, and he put it all together. And uh, <laughs> and you know, I don't know. They're talented dudes. What can I say? Those yeah, people was are a... talented. <laughs> <laughs> It was an inter interesting video. I was watching. It. I was like, then you can't like the guy starts off, and then then you come in. It was, it sounded great. And of course, I don't know who sings the original of that. That was a cover that you sent me. What's that called again? It's called Feeling Good. Yeah, and I uh, I think they got a version by uh, Nina Simone, is who they're covering, and then it's become just one of those standard songs that everybody does. But it's actually written by a guy over in England for a musical. It turns out I knew I found out I looked it up and they had no idea. Those guys over there in the UK had no idea that this song they were covering by Nina Simone was actually written by some guy who was <laughs> <laughs> from over there. <laughs> Small world, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, well, you guys brought a whole music. different vibe to that song for sure. You've heard. So you've heard the song before the original. Yes. Yes. Where'd you hear it? What? I don't know. I feel like it's a, popular song like over the years i don't know i've heard it in like commercials even like for an ad like the i've course never or something. heard i've never heard it before dude <laughs> oh yeah yeah i've heard it just randomly i've never like listened to it or anything on purpose it's just there <laughs> it must have some good commercial the other success. Day i was out at a gig just watching a friend's band play and one of the opening acts is covering the song Somebody in the opening act, some dude with just an acoustic guitar is singing this song. Really? The, how the heck how the heck have I missed this song for all these years? What am I how, <laughs> what's going on here? Have I been living under a rock or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll be laying up tonight in bed trying to figure out where I've heard that song now. Uh well, you know, it's a pretty killer song, and in a ways, it's a country song. When you when you listen to the words, it's about birds and fish and trees and rivers and the sky and stuff. That's all country stuff. It, yeah. But they they're different over there. They're they got a different style over in England. I like it a lot. They're cool, uh, but it sounds like James Bond or something. <laughs> it. I've noticed, and I've never been over there, but it just seems like online and I watch other bands that play from that region. Um, it's like the following is like, it definitely has its own niche culture, but it's like they're diehards. The people that like that kind of music, they're like really into it. And it's like a lifestyle. I don't know. Can you say that there's some truth to that or you just, or am I just crazy? There was a handful of diehard Hellbound Glory fans out in the crowd at each gig that we played. That's awesome. And they came all out. They've been waiting for years and years and years. Uh, it was a, it was a blast. I lost my voice on the first night, which was kind of a drag, obviously. But, uh, but you know, still made it through most of the gigs. And I'm going to go back and can't wait it's gonna be great now next time i'll go back i'll have my voice sit back and yeah. show my house be fun well the diehards can help you through the songs i'm sure There's yeah well the, you know everywhere. those guys those guys in the video that guy with the cowboy hat did all, most of the singing for the last gigs i could barely talk so he <laughs> helped me sing all the songs he learned all the songs and he sang most of them he did a lot wow. of the singing the last gig it was it was cool they're good buddies. That's awesome. Black Skies, right? The Black Skies. Yeah, the video's cool, too. I mean, uh, the guy who directed it is the same guy who who recorded it, the the producer. And he, uh, he brought a bunch of cool new instrumentation to the song that we're going to be releasing in the next couple months that we recorded with them. It's got some bagpipe on it, some cellos. <laughs> 
of strings and it's like a whole Celtic freaking country drinking song. And it's gonna be <laughs> it'll be out in the next couple of months. And they they brought some cool stuff. Like I said, there's talented people over there. Oh yeah. It's pretty cool. That's cool, man. I it's always excited to see and hear something different. Uh you know, I'm obviously familiar with your music and listened for a long time. So just listening to you with bagpipes going on, <laughs> it's going to be a new thing. You know, <laughs> like he's, he's moving in new directions here. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I, I'm just kind of going with the flow of it, it more than anything. <laughs> yeah. But cool. I didn't even have to, all I did was sing and play a little, I played the, uh, some lead guitar and I sang and they took care of all the other instrumentation except for just the voice and the guitar solo nice that makes so sense. that made it a lot easier <laughs> yeah you can really just get out there and enjoy it and not have to worry about everything what uh so when now you played texas or is that still coming up i played in austin texas last weekend last weekend yeah and that that was a launch for shooters gig stand app and it was a first i mean i've never played in austin texas to more than a handful of people we every time we go there you know i don't know they don't like us that much or they didn't but uh this is the first time we've ever sold out a gig in austin texas and i don't know if it was the app or it was just the fact we haven't been there in a long time or the fact that shooter helped promote it or what, but it was more people than I've ever seen at a Hell Bound Glory show. Oh, in that's Austin. great. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So we did that, and it was a, it was part of South by Southwest, but not the band part. It was the tech part. I guess they do one week of South by Southwest just for tech. So it was, <laughs> I don't know, we were like, it was, it was cool. It was fun. <laughs> they gave us a big old condo, yeah, right to the coolest bar around, and you know, I don't know, we played gigs, had a condo, left a bunch of food. And... <laughs> Living like rock stars, man. For a couple days, we really were. <laughs> and I looked at, I drank at my bar tab. I didn't have to pay for drinks at all. I spent the entire time drinking. <laughs> That's uh, easy on the wallet that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was always like that, I might probably drink more i guess it's a good thing i don't <laughs> yeah yeah that could turn in bad real quick <laughs> for yeah for you know, life. I, most of the bars i go to is like they you know, nobody has it you know it's a fucking guy <laughs> nobody nobody knows old leroy out at the bars <laughs> can't get nobody to buy me drinks back home back in texas they're just giving them out yeah Every time I was getting low, they say, "You want another one, Leroy?" And I say, "Sure." <laughs> Why not, <laughs> man? What else? What else is new? I did. What else is, you know? You know, those are the big things that I've been promoting. Uh, yeah. You know, just the new albums. I don't know. I think they're pretty killer albums. Thirteen Corners is a badass song. Yeah, that's the opening of that that live i actually heard it um not on i might have heard it backwards when i first heard it i might have heard the live before the studio i okay. see what you're saying mm -hmm. yeah because we dropped that with the video live it's that a good verse i'm gonna be recording that song for years and years to come i think i'm gonna do a bluegrass version yeah that'd be i'm gonna cool. do a blue bluegrass version and then who knows every sort of different genre version of the song i'm gonna pick out all the best and do every different genre <laughs> <laughs> yeah the whole record could uh new record could just be the same song just different formats <laughs> I, I might as well give it a shot yeah. you know if this works the song works and a good song is a good song did, do you have a favorite on there? On the newest album? Yeah. Uh, 
what's my favorite? I don't. I like 13 Corners probably is my favorite. I think that one's that yeah. one's a good story too. That one's a a good old fashioned country song. It tells a cool ghost story. Uh you know, I like Dead Friend off of the off of the the acoustic album. That one turned out really good. It's been a lot of years trying to get that song down and finally finally got a definitive version of it, I feel like. Uh and then Didn't Die Young Ain't Done Trying is a pretty killer tune. I mean, just for the, Yeah. I don't I have don't a know. favorite. Um it depends on the day and on the mood for me. But yeah, they're all good. Like you don't I don't have the Yeah. Not it's, one you know how there's some records that come on, and you're like, oh you you hit the skip button, you know. Like I don't do that with, with uh any of your records really. Well, thank you, partner. It's uh <laughs> You know, I can't say the same. There's a lot of them I skip, but that's just, man, I don't know. I'm too close attached. I don't listen to my own music all that much unless it's the new stuff. Yeah. And the new stuff, and then just kind of drifting in on back. But uh, I'm Do looking you... forward to the next one, getting back in there with Shooter as soon as we can. I know that we got the songs written, just kind of matter of getting it together and getting the right elements also got all this english stuff to do so yeah. him and i'll get back in the studio probably sooner than later we're already talking about it but i don't know i'd say it's a pretty damn solid album nobody knows you and then there's that cover song of that song that's 100 years old nobody <laughs> knows you I thought that was pretty clever yeah there's a little talking part in it i talk about the dude it definitely this, tells a story. Yeah. Like the so talking part. Concept in. Album. Kind of a concept album, I guess. They're all all Hellbound Glory albums are kind of concept albums. If you listen to them and think about it. Pure Scum had like a storyline in it. DUI. And, and then DUI or Died is the last song off Pure Scum. And then the next one is all about reeling down the highway and driving drunk in the mountain roads and the ice. And then it just keeps going. And then you listen to the, you know, it keeps telling the story. And you go back and listen for those, uh, you know, those little callbacks to the other albums. I put them all throughout all the different albums. There's all sorts of different ways leading into the next one. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> the uh, When you write, um, like you already said, you already got material for the next one. Was it written at the same time as the this last one or is this you just started writing directly after that just after that just over the okay. last year last okay. year that's some fucking it's been a rough couple of years dude yeah <laughs> Fuck. the broken leg and all that other crap it's been so a lot of time to write and a lot of time stuff to write about right you got to make something positive out of that situation yeah I lost, well, I... lost my mind laid up with the leg Oh, it was, it was awful, dude. And you got through a whole entire interview with me there. I can't even imagine. I don't even ever want to hear it. I wish we could just do something with it. So I bet I was I was out. And I was, <laughs> I was dude, I was sucking on bed. I was a, <laughs> you have no idea. And even since then, just how deeper and crazier he's gotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes for good music, at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a decent time. I mean, uh, you heard the interview. How, do I sound just off my fucking rocker? I guess I always no. probably. No, I don't think so. I, was fucking... I thought it, I thought it was awesome when you're going off about Sam Hunt, dude. I love. Okay, I, that clip was awesome. Huh? I guess I must just be getting fucking spooked or something. I thought I was because I was fucking zonked. As you probably. <laughs> Yeah, I'm probably. No, I left the house and, well, you know, I've been just sitting here in a little tiny place for. Right. No, I thought months. it was great. Like I got to right. see That's behind good. the Nothing scenes. Be embarrassed and told me all these embarrassed about. Nothing oh, to be no. no. All right. That's good. Thank God. Oh no! Yeah, I wish more people would just let it fly like that. Anyway, you know, you turn on the mic and the screen, and people 
I'm still weirded out by doing this. I don't like, I'd rather do this in person. It's more, you know, personal yeah. anyway. It's more natural. All the combos I've had with, you know, other people, it's always better in person. But it's hard to fit one these, in. And one of these days we'll get there. Yeah. I'll get out there in it. I'm planning on being around for a long fucking time. That's why I put the immortal hellbound glory on it. Uh, immortal. That's right. Seeing if I can keep Hellbound Glory going, I mean, at least under my my direction, another 10, 20 years, and I'm bringing up a whole new new batch of players. I got Chuck now. Chuck's freaking killer. He's a killer songwriter too. He's got. He's going to start bringing songs into the band as well and singing. I'm also okay. bringing on a, a fiddle player. I'm bringing on Shooter's fiddle player Aubrey is going to start singing some songs with us. When you hear her on the album, she's, uh, you know, she's singing awesome. harmony about all of it. I think, uh, so she's, she's going to start singing. I'm going to have a whole bunch of different voices and different singers and different uh, lineups. going to be cool. Yeah. I could, uh, Man, that's gonna be great. I can't. Oh, it is gonna be bad. And yeah. she's uh have you heard the vinyl version of of uh Nobody Knows You? The vinyl version? Yeah, the one on the vinyl, because it has a different different tracks. No, I don't think so. Oh damn, you gotta hear the uh trouble in mind off the, the vinyl version. Off the vinyl, sorry. Uh Yep. Aubrey just goes off. She goes off on this rap at the end of the album that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's it, great. Uh, so, who knows? I'm trying to figure out a way to keep this thing going for a long time. Yeah, this is this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. It's It's in your blood. Yeah, pretty much. So, where's that? Uh, is there anything else, man? I mean, we... I think we covered all the big stuff. Um, uh, I don't this, know. It's cool. All yeah. the new exciting stuff I, happening. I wish I could be there sitting around bullshitting. And I, I actually get to meet you in person. I feel like that'd be a lot more fun than this. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, I'll get on that gig stand. We're gonna we're gonna see what we can do. Let's get something going. <laughs> gig stand. I mean, give it a shot, people. This is your chance to bring whatever band you want to bring. This is putting it in the hands of the fans and the bands because nobody else is going to book hellbound glory anywhere else. It's tough to, I mean, the clubs are tough. The festivals are, festivals are tougher. And I don't know what I did to piss everybody off on that side of the business, but I can't <laughs> get a call. I feel like I'm a nice guy, but I, I don't, I'm a nice guy and I work for cheap and I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I might, I don't even care. i Maybe that's why, but uh, you know, we're we're not getting invited to a lot of the festivals. So, if you want to see how about glory, let's work together, people. If you want to see it, let's work. I mean, you get the show going, you bring out some friends. I'll make it, and I'll sing, and I'll take care of my voice. And, <laughs> you know, I won't have any problems with my voice next time. Sorry, England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm in the process of. We just moved into this place and um a year ago or something. But there's a barn here I'm converting into like my new little studio and uh I'm gonna start shooting videos and stuff out there, getting more serious about it. Um if you come through we should we should see if we can work out something. There you go. You build up your empire, man. I like it. Yeah, I mean I just like doing this shit anyway, so might as well you know, turn it into right. something. <laughs> Grassroots, man. Well, that's how a lot of things get started. You know, how do you think the Grand Ole Opry got started? People just doing what they enjoy. So, I mean, I wish you the best. I think it's yeah. cool. I think what you're doing is rad. Right on, man. Well, where should people find you? All the social media, you got the website. Hellbound Glory. You know, we're uh, just Hellbound Glory. Doc. Just look up Hellbound, and that's where you'll see. Hellbound Glory, although uh, hellboundglory.com, 
uh, we do some social media stuff, but it's fucking kind of a slog. <laughs> uh, More importantly, I, just follow the music. Just follow, just listen to the albums. Each time you listen to it, we make a couple pennies and you know, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing all right. I mean, Chuck and the gang. Go listen to the Black Skies featuring Hellbound Glory, Feeling Good, and be on the lookout for a new track sometime this spring called Caught in the Undertow. Caught in the Undertow. Caught in the okay. Undertow. We're out pretty soon. Okay. With back and strings. <laughs> I'll share it on uh, my end, too. So Can't wait right. to hear it. All right, brother. Well, well, you enjoy your evening, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Hey, I'll see you later, man. You rock out. Thank you for this. I appreciate it.